Developer interviews can be really tough and really intimidating, but I promise you, if you do these five things, you'll put yourself in a better position to get that job. All right, first off, my name is James Q. Quick, and I do uh, one to two to sometimes three videos a week on web development related topics on this channel. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. But today we're here to talk about developer interviews and some tips that you can use to get better at them. Um, I have been through lots of interview processes, processes, processes. Uh, myself in the past, I've done uh, anything from a strictly behavioral interview to a whiteboarding interview all the way up to like the really intense uh, six hour long uh, interview series of interviews at Google. I've done that twice and I got really close both times, but I didn't get it. But I've been through tons of different interviews and I am currently teaching at a boot camp called Launch Code remotely. And we're in the process where people are starting to think about jobs and interviewing and getting ready for that and trying to put themselves in the best position. And so I was kind of thinking, what advice would I give my students? And we'll have lots of conversations about this, but what advice would I give them? And that translated into here are these five things that I want to be able to share with not only them, but also you out there and things that you can do, things that you can think about in your preparation for interviews. So tip number one, this is one that hopefully is obvious, but it may not be to a lot of people. And it's the fact that you should, you can, and you absolutely should ask what to expect in your interview. There's no reason you should walk into an interview and be blindsided by doing a whiteboarding problem or being blindsided by having a panel when you just expected one person. From a company's perspective, they want you, hopefully, if they're good at this, if they're bad, they may not, but they want you to feel comfortable. They want you to really express who you are to really be able to show the things that you know. And so they kind of want to help you feel at ease. So things that you can kind of ask about, will I have to do any live programming? Will, if I do do live coding, is it on a whiteboard? Is it on a computer? If it's on a computer, is it just in like Microsoft Word or do I have access to an editor, a text editor? Uh, will there be a panel? Will I have multiple interviews? How long will the interviews be? What type of questions can I expect? Um, and then you can just be really blunt to say, hey, I'd like to do some extra preparation. Is there anything you can uh, suggest that I prepare for? Uh, they may not, they may not tell you anything, but you at least need to ask so that you give yourself as much of a leg up going into it as possible. And there's one thing I've learned, the most overwhelming aspect of interviews is just the nerves, to be honest. And the more you have an idea of what to expect, when that thing comes up, you'll feel more comfortable because you knew it was coming, you knew to expect it. So ask what to expect in your interviews, what it is, how long it will be, who will be there, what type of questions will you code, ask all those questions to make sure that you feel comfortable going in at least knowing what to expect. All right, number two here is to be confident. And the caveat to this is you have to at least pretend to be confident. And I think this is a misconception. Like you probably look at me uh, as a YouTuber, you probably look at other people doing other things and you just assume that they naturally have all of this confidence. I do have a lot of confidence now, but I also have situations where I'm not that confident and I've also been in interviews where I wasn't confident at all, but you have to trick yourself. You're going to do better if you are confident. You're going to look better. You're going to sound better. You're going to perform better. The things you say will be better if you are confident and comfortable. And so one of the tips that I do, I do this uh, almost before like every uh, in-person talk that I give, is I do a little Superman pose. You just kind of pretend to be Superman, throw your chest out really high. And uh, there's something, actually uh, people have suggested that maybe it doesn't do this, but it does for me. Maybe it's uh, the placebo effect, but it just kind of instills some confidence in you. So you kind of trick your brain. You can also look at uh, some breathing techniques to help kind of ease your breathing and your emotions and things. But if you think about confidence from the perspective of a hiring manager, if you have two candidates that are similar, uh, similar background, similar knowledge, and one is able to confidently uh, explain what they're talking about, they have their head up, they're using gestures, they're given, I don't, like, I don't really believe too much in the firm handshake type thing because I feel like people overdo it, but give a good handshake, look people in the eye, be able to speak loudly and clearly. Those simple things are the difference between someone in a similar background or similar experience the difference between you getting that job and them not getting the job or vice versa if you're not the confident one. 
So even if you're not confident, even if you're scared to death, which I understand and I guarantee you will be the case, you have to physically and emotionally learn how to overcome that and project confidence to feign confidence. You have to pretend. You have to fake it until you make it, unfortunately. And don't think that this is not something, don't think this is something you can't do. You absolutely can do this. You have to be intentional. You have to do some things, practice your breathing, tell yourself that you're worth it and give yourself a little bit of confidence boost going into these interviews. And that might just be the difference between you and that other candidate. All right, number three is you should have a few different projects to talk about in your interviews. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't know what to build. Uh, and, and then the advice is just literally build anything. And I think that that advice is true. But to be a little more specific, I'll give you my example. When I was in college, I wanted to learn about Android mobile development. I got a textbook. I started going through it, following the tutorials, and I got really bored. I was like, I just kind of want to build something that would be fun. So I built a Harry Potter trivia app. I'm a big Harry Potter fan. Um, and I had like all my friends like writing trivia questions and helping me out with it. And I built this app and I published it. That application, as simple as it may sound, as non-relevant as it may sound, is what I talked about uh, for several years in 90% of my interviews with companies like Microsoft. So I started my career out at Microsoft. What I talked about in 90% of those interviews with Microsoft was that Harry Potter trivia app. I had a project that could show multiple different things. It showed that I could learn, it showed that I was passionate, I was interested in learning, and it showed that I could get a job done and I could finish it. Then there's the conversation about like, well, what did you actually use to build it? And then you talk about technologies and things like that. I could use that project to talk about anything else that someone asked me, even behavioral questions. Tell me about a time that you led a team. Well, I was working on this Harry Potter trivia app and I had several of my friends kind of working and writing questions and we had kind of a review process and I took all of their stuff in and we would talk about it and then get those things into the application. I also had a friend of mine who wanted to contribute a part. So they did a little bit of coding and I was able to help get that code into my project. Uh, tell me about a time that you had to learn something new that you had never done before. Well, I never worked with a database before and I ended up doing a SQLite database to store high scores. I could literally use that application, that project to talk about anything in an interview. You need two to three of those that you can go in and when people ask you a question, you can draw parallels to one of those projects. Trust me, it is a game changer. This is what I talked about so much. These should be listed on your portfolio, but you should be able to confidently talk about them in the interview because people will ask you. If you have stuff on your on your resume or your portfolio that you're not prepared to talk about confidently, it shouldn't be there. You should do a different project or you should go and build that project out more so that you can talk about it confidently and intelligently. Again, this is what I talked about in 90% of my interviews with one of the top tech companies in the world. You have to have those projects there so that you can talk about them in your interviews. All right, uh, number four here is to be honest. And uh, this may seem a little simplistic. This may seem uh, maybe very obvious, but I've seen people mess this up over and over again in interviews. The one huge red flag that I have when interviewing someone else is they explain something about a technology to me incorrectly. I would much rather you say you don't know X, Y, and Z technology than you to tell me you understand it and explain it to me incorrectly. That shows me that you don't really have an understanding of what's going on. It shows me that you're not even aware enough to know that you don't understand. And it shows me that when we make technical decisions, you're gonna run with something that you may think is right while still not fully understanding it. And that is a significant red flag for me. That's the first thing that I that triggers me to say this, this person is probably not the right one. Be honest. Even if it's a topic you think you understand, say, well, I'm pretty sure it does this, this, and this because of this, this, and this. Don't say, oh, I know what that is. It does this and be wrong. That's not what you want to do. Now, for me, I've been in this situation a lot. Um, I went into an interview at FedEx and on the thing it said they worked with some older technology and I went in and said, <laughs> they asked me, have you ever used this? And I said, nope. But here's other things that I have used that from my research, because I looked it up, are similar. And here's why the things that I've done are similar to what that will do. So I can certainly learn that thing. I don't know that thing, but I can learn it. Also, when I uh, had my interviews with Auth0, where I work now, 
they asked me, how much do you know about identity? Do you know OpenID Connect? And do you know OAuth 2? And I said, nope, not at all. I was honest, but then told them how excited I was for the opportunity to learn that stuff. And part of my interview for that was to do a video on one of their products. So learn their product and then do a video from it. And I wouldn't have gotten to that point had I lied to them and then gotten called out for really not understanding that stuff. It's very simple. It seems like it makes sense, but don't lie. Be honest and embrace it. If there's something you don't know, draw parallels to something else you do know, be honest and then tell them how excited you are to learn it for their company. All right, now number five here is to find your reason. There's lots of people out there with resumes just like yours. There's lots of people out there who have gone through boot camps just like you have. There's lots of people that have gone through computer science degrees just like you or your friend or someone else have. There's lots of people who've watched Udemy courses and done all these things, but there is only one you. You have to embrace this. You have to find what is the thing that makes you unique. Here's my thing. I walk into an interview and they say, what's special about you? And I say, I like to teach. If you hire me on your team, I will make your team better because I'm a teacher. Look at my YouTube. I've created hundreds of videos. I've created courses. I've written blog articles. I've taught in person. I've taught virtually. My thing is I will make your team better because innately I am a teacher. I will bring that to your team. I'm a damn good developer, but I will make your team better because I'm a teacher. You have to have that thing for yourself. I can't tell you what that is. You have to find it for yourself and it may be something that you think is not relevant at all. That's okay. Embrace your background, embrace your experience, embrace the things you've done before and figure out a way to craft that into a story that says, this is why I'm special. This is why I'm unique. And this is why you want to hire me. You have to find that reason for yourself. And that's a very personal thing. Only you can do, I can't help you with that, but you have to find it. And then you have to articulate it in your interview process to show them they're the person that they want to hire. So those are my five tips for your developer interviews. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you feel like I missed anything or there's any other questions that you'd like to hear me talk about in the future with interviewing as a developer. Appreciate you checking out the channel. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did like subscribe, all those things, and I'll catch you in the next video.